Well guys, if you haven't seen my last video, which was about a couple of crashes, one was by Travis, who's vegan cyclist's mate, and he had a crash going around a corner, descending down a hill or mountain, and the other one was NorCal, he was doing his first criterium for the year, and he was coming around the last corner, so he unfortunately completed most of the race, which is a bit of a bummer, and... He had a crash and he came off and then he hit the curb and I, and I think the curb did most of the damage to him which is very unfortunate it was quite a squared off high curb so really feel sorry for those guys that came off their bikes but i put an argument forward that the there was an undulation just before they lost they lost traction with their rear wheel and i believe that the way that the disc brake bike is designed is a contributing factor to that now we had a few comments so i just want to go through that so let's roll the intro and let's cover what you guys have actually said about that last video well just before we jump into the comments which is there's three main themes i want to cover now, the first thing I want to point out is those two videos were picked because I believe there was some similarity to what was happening and that there was an undulation. Now, with the, the Travis crash, if you look very closely, and I highlight that in the video, undulating here, but I know it happened very quick if you watched the video and you didn't stop it or went back and watched it again. But there was an undulation on that and there was also an undulation on the NorCal. And the undulation was kind of almost right on the corner it um, you can see if you watch the bicycle in front you can actually see that bicycle go through the undulation so that was the theme of my last video but people did point out other things and the first comment I would like to address is the white paint now the white paint was only in the NorCal video. It could only have been a contributing factor in the NorCal video. Now, I when I first saw this and I watched it, and I was it was Durian Ryder who actually was showing it on his house where I first saw it, and that was my first impression. You go, ah, oh, look, you know, he's hit some white paint there, just coming out of the corner, and he's lost traction there on the brakes. But uh, when I look at it more closely. And before he hits that white line, the back wheels already started to slide. And what you usually have to understand is, is when you hit some surface, the sliding generally starts to be seen some small half a meter or whatever past the point where it's initially started to happen. So I, from my viewing of the video, I don't believe it, it was anything to do with the white markings or white paint on the road. Now you can go watch it again. Um, I know some people have difference of opinion on that, but from what I could see, I don't believe it was caused by the white paint. Now, the second theme or comment that I had on that video was that it was just right error. And there was a lot of comments that basically highlighted this. They says, look, those two guys, both of them, they were going to the corner too fast. They overcooked it and they basically were on the brakes which you shouldn't be in the corner and that's why they they slid out or lost control of their bike now that is that is a fair comment and because we don't know exactly how they were applying the brakes in those corners and we it's very i mean it's very hard to replicate an accident in any way we can only look at it and make a determination but that's a fair comment and that could have been a contributing factor also the one where uh, Travis was in, the surface was not the best. You could see that there was a few cracks, the road was starting to break up, but there wasn't any potholes. I didn't see any potholes, but there was um, some poor condition of the road and there was the undulation. I still believe the undulation was the probably the biggest contributing factor. And obviously, if he was going slower, I mean, he probably wouldn't have lost control of the vehicle. So speed is always a contributing factor as well. So that is a fair, fair comment. Now, when we go to the NorCal one, 
that also could be a contributing factor because he also had the guys in front breaking quite hard, which he didn't expect. And he actually, if you go and watch Norcow's video, you can see that he admits that. He says he wasn't expecting the guys to be breaking when they were doing the last, the very last sprint section or going into the very last sprint section of the, the criterium. And you mentally would go, okay, then guys, you know, get my oxygen levels up. Here we go. We're going to hit max watts and we're going to be leading out out of this corner. But what actually happened is some of the guys were, were braking. They were on the brakes, which kind of surprised him. So obviously in that situation, because he probably wasn't expecting it, he probably did make an over-braking situation, which then contributed to the accident. So rider error is a fair argument because we can't, we don't really know. Look, I mean, this is my opinion. I believe that the undulations did, were a contributing factor, but probably rider error is maybe a equivalent, a contributing factor or a bigger contributing factor because if the Travis was going slower, there wouldn't have been an accident. And also if NorCal had not had that pre pre-fought of they're going to be accelerating here instead of braking, he might have approached that corner differently. So that's fair comment. Now the last comment that I had was, was about compliance and the compliance you have on a bike is between your hands or the handlebars and the rubber that's on the road and on the back it's between your seat and the tire on the road and everything in between has some form of compliance you know your seat might your seat might flex right because it's, it's spongy then you have your seat post and I especially the thinner ones can flex I've seen that then you have your frame the compliance of the frame and then you have the the wheel and spokes and rims that tend to be deeper seem to be stiffer so it wouldn't give you as much compliance and then you obviously have the tire and all these things add up to your total compliance on the bike and one of the comments was that hey look most of the compliance comes from your tire and your spokes and I probably should have mentioned that in the in the last video because he's kind of got a really good point there because the the flexing of your spokes as you're, especially when you're leaning over in a corner, those spokes and wheel, it actually flexes to some degree. And if you have a wheel that's not that stiff, you can actually see this, especially on rim brakes, because you'll feel the actual brake, brake surface starts to touch the pads. So you can, you know the wheel is flexing. And what actually happens is, is as you are leaning over, that wheel, as you go over undulations and bumps, will act like a spring in the spokes and then we'll, we'll push force down which is not straight down but in a angle that's pushing it back towards where it wants to be so you would have an angle towards the road like a 45 degree angle say if you're leaning at 45 you're probably not leaning that much but it depends on your angle and that force then will allow that tire and rim to flex to keep the tire on the road so that is really a good point Now, we've talked about the spokes and the tyre and that, that giving a significant amount of the compliance on the bike. Now, one thing I want to highlight is, is when we have a wheel, and I've got an example here of a G3 wheel, which is a Campagnolia wheel, and it's the back wheel, which is generally takes the most force of your body and being pushed down. You have different spokes. Now, some of the spokes are cross spokes and some of the spokes are radial on this particular design. So... What will happen is, is if you're just coasting, you have a balance of stresses. And generally, because it's dished, you will have a higher tension on one side than the other. And you also may have a 21-spoke system like the G3. So what they do is, is they have a set, a seven are twice the tension of 14. And that's the way those wheels are made. And it's all balanced. So your, your rim's sitting in the middle and it's just appropriately. Now, as you're leaning over and you're coasting, that wheel then would just normally flex with, with, the, with the spokes. It just flex up like this and, and ensure that there is like a spring pressure onto the road besides the actual weight of your body. 
Now, when you start braking on a rim brake bike, there is no extra tension applied to the spokes in a vertical plane. You only get it in a horizontal plane because the only force, extra force in the spokes is due to the inertia of the bike wanting to move forward, right? So that's the only extra force you'll have in it. But with a disc brake bike, once you start to brake, you're actually putting extra force through all of the cross broking that are trailing that brake. So then you are adding extra tension and detensioning in the cross spokes. And this can have an impact on the spring effect that that, that rim and spoke combination has. And I believe this is why you have these problems with disc brakes in these undulations. It's also the frame because the frame's being loaded and also the spokes have an extra amount of loading because the braking force on a disc brake bike needs to be trans transferred from the hub to the rim. In a rim brake bike, the braking force is not transferred from the hub to the rim through the spokes. Now in conclusion, we can all speculate, which is what we've done, and let's let's be real, that's what I'm doing as well, speculating on these two accidents, and I've seen other accidents that the pros have had where I believe it's that loading and offloading in the wheels and the frame that have caused these, these quite experienced cyclists to come to grief. And in a rim brake bike, yeah, you might say that might have still happened. We don't know because we haven't got a control. We can't do the experiment exactly the same on two, two riders. Even if you've got, like, say, Travis, you got him to ride down the hill exactly the same time on a rim brake bike, try and following the same line and hitting exactly the same spot on the road, blah, blah, blah. To really reproduce that would be very, very difficult. So we're all speculating. But from... Me watching people and seeing with disc brakes ridden at a high level, I do believe the design of those bikes is causing some compromising to the braking system when you're riding at the limits of that bike. When a rim brake bike, you probably would have been able to have a little bit more control of the braking. And you can disagree with that, that's fine, but I'm putting my hypothesis forward, my view forward, that I believe that these accidents, the contributing factor is due to the design of the bike, which is the disc brakes on them. Okay, guys, leave your comments down below. You might still disagree with me. And that's what I really like, guys, because I want this to be a community. I don't want this to be a, I'm telling you the way it is, right? That's just my view and my opinion, and I want to hear your view and your opinion because then people can read the comments, they can they can watch my video, and they can say, hey, yeah, Wayne, I disagree with that. That's fine. Or some people might say, yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. Or there might be someone in the comments who puts a different idea forward, and people might go, yeah, well, I think that's what happened. So, guys, that's how I want to basically present this video. So leave your comments down below. And that's where I'm going to leave it, and I will see you next vid.